here. And now we're going to see Leviathan being described. And you want to talk about a fire-breathing dragon. We see this described perfectly in Leviathan in Job chapter 41. Look at verse number 1. The Bible reads, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? So right away we're seeing this is referring to a creature that at least spends some time in the sea. Because he's saying drawing him out with a hook. Right? That's what a fisherman does. They draw out with a hook. Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down. Canst thou put a, a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Again, things that people use, thorns, hooks to go fishing with. He's saying, can you, can you do that? You're going to be able to draw up Leviathan with a hook? Verse 3, will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Basically saying, you are not the master of Leviathan, right? You can't, he's not going to speak softly unto you because he's scared of you. Verse 4, will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird, or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Basically, again, you can't, you're not going to domesticate this beast that he's being referred to here, Leviathan. Verse number 6, Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? So now, this is talking about, you know, when you kill an animal in sport, and you fill his skin with barbed irons, right? You, you, you do like a taxidermy on him, and you, and you recreate the animal after you've killed him, and, and you set him back up again. Um, that's what I think it is. Now, obviously, this could be referring to just trying to, to bring him down. But um, I think it's just referring to his massive size. Let's keep reading it. Verse number 8. Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? So this is referring to this thing so big and so strong that your hope, just, just seeing this thing, let alone trying to do anything to him, like your hope's just going to be shot down. It's like, there's no way I can do anything to this creature. Verse number 10, none is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. So this is now God referring to, you know, well, this creature is so fierce, none's going to stir him up. Says, so who's going to stand before me? Because God's the one who made this creature, right? So he's like, like you know, who, who prevents me and who should I repay? And he's, he's using this creature that, that instills fear in man to make the, the bigger application of, you know, how you ought to be viewing the Lord. Verse 12, I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride. So again, now this is referring to a beast. It is talking about bringing him up from the water, and it has scales. And his scales are so close together, it says they're shut up together as with a close seal, like they're airtight. It's like an armor. Uh, one is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. Sundered would be like cut apart, right? Verse 18, by his kneesings, a light doth shine and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. So this is given some pretty good detail to this creature, Leviathan. So by his kneesings, so you think about this is going to be, it's kind of like a sneeze or something coming out of his mouth. A light doth shine. Light coming out of his mouth or out of his nose, maybe. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. So this, this bird, like an orange, probably yellow orange eye, eyeballs. And then verse 19, out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. This is talking about a fire-breathing dragon. I mean, it's literally what this is describing. The purpose of describing this beast, again, is to show the great power of God. But the amount of detail, why would the Bible, why would God spend so much time going into detail about a creature that doesn't really exist. Right. About something that's just myth. 
and trying to relate how people are so scared of that, but you ought to be scared of me. Like, be scared of what? Scared of, of, of a non-existent creature? Oh, yeah, I'm real scared. I'm real scared of these creatures that don't even exist, so why would I even be scared of God? It doesn't make any sense. It would, it would, it would be counterintuitive. It would be counterproductive for the Lord to make, to make a reference to something that's not even real. I mean, you already, have, you already have people saying, well, God's not real. Why should I fear him? Just like I don't have to fear this, this dragon, this fire, that's not real. Look, it is real. It's a real creature being described here. And it's talking about fire going out of his mouth. Verse 20, out of his nostrils go a smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. This is important. I believe this to be physically true, that the heart is very hard of this creature being described. But when you start looking at all of these various characteristics of the dragon, you can see, or Leviathan, you can see why Satan is referred to as Leviathan. A hard heart, right? A stony heart. A heart that, that's just... Uh, already given over to this reprobation. You've got this pride and the scales, right? And, and, you know, fire and destruction coming out of his mouth. All of these various attributes of this creature line up perfectly with Satan, which is why I think this is a perfect creature to describe Satan. And it's scary. Satan is scary. Satan is out to devour. You know, Bible says that the devil is a roaring lion. Uh,